Welcome. Interference of periodicity. What the heck does that mean? Phrases have length, and those lengths can be equal or different. Uh, phrases of different lengths may be um, compounds of each other, two and four, or they may be irregular. And irregular lengths of phrases, when they're combined, can give you resultant rhythms and resultant melodies that are exciting and interesting. Today we'll look at the combination of irregular phrase lengths and uh, maybe combine it with a little harmonic trick I've been working with. So stick around. Q logo. <laughs> All right, so um, we're shooting from above, so we can see some piano notes, uh, both on the screen display and from above. So the simplest way to explain interference of periodicity is to look at um, a combination of uh, lengths. Uh, let's take a simple phrase of four notes. And I'm going to combine it against a phrase of three notes. So that was F, G, A, C. And if I play these three notes, E flat, B flat, D, at the same time, they'll cycle against each other. see the pattern appearing visually on the screen and hear it too probably not that interesting by itself but sort of exciting and fun and what if I actually offset those two by an eighth note so alternating hands interesting because you can hear the resultant melody. In fact, the top notes and bottom notes create little resultant rhythms as well. And um, that by itself is a lot of fun. And I got to say, it's fun to do for pianists. I think it'd be difficult to do if you were a guitarist. Tapping might be a possibility um, or complicated finger picking. So let's take it one step further and um, create a phrase that uses all of the notes of of a scale in the format of the interference of periodicity so um, here I'm going to play um, a G major 7 chord and um, against it quite simply the remaining notes from the scale which turn in, which turn out to be a, an A minor triad uh, and so A very easy pattern to hear repeating and see repeating as it creates a scale. Now to create a little vitality and motion in this I'm going to uh, change slowly from one scale to another. Now if I change from the key of G, just one sharp F sharp, to the key of D, which is just a fifth away, the C has to turn into C sharp. Let's know what happens. The sound becomes Lydian, the raised four. The next key signature is A. The G becomes G sharp. The 
next key is E, the D becomes D sharp. And so on to B. The B key signature needs an A sharp. Here we go. And now this is a very interesting modal sound. As we move to F sharp, the E becomes E sharp. Here we go. And F sharp is the same as G flat, so now I'm going to start thinking in flats if that's okay. The next key signature is D flat. And I'm going to change the B to a C because that's in the D flat scale. Here we go. flat major, the G flat becomes G natural. E flat major, the D flat becomes D. B flat major, the A flat becomes A. F major, the E flat becomes E. C major, the B flat becomes B. And finally, we've completed the circle and we're back to the key of G. going around the circle of fifths, gradually incrementing one sharp until we get to the flats, and then removing a flat. We've created a pattern that is continually changing but feels in place. I don't know if you noticed, but we wound up being a step above where we began. We began with this pattern, this chord, and this chord, and we wound up a step up here. That's actually pretty cool sounding just by itself. It also looks kind of great on the screen. Well, I hope that's been interesting for you. Interference of periodicity is the combination of phrases of differing lengths, and there are lots of possibilities inherent in that. We just looked at the simplest one, which is each note being the same value, an eighth note, if you will. Um, we could easily combine phrases that have notes of differing lengths and phrases of differing lengths. I remember years ago playing a piece that required the bass player to play in six while the keyboard player and the guitarist played in seven. It took us a while to get round to that. This phrase length was simple, three times four. That's a 12 beat phrase. Um, you can do the math and imagine how long phrases can actually get. Well, it's been fun to talk about. Try it at home. You can try it in your sequencer if you can't play the piano comfortably like this, and it does take some practice to pull something like this off. Just program it in. Uh, arpeggiators are a great way to try interference of periodicity. Set the arpeggiator length to a length that's not the length of your measure. Your measure might be eight eighth notes long. Set the arpeggiator to nine eighth notes long. The phrase will continually loop against your chord progression and create an interesting, exciting, vital world. Well, thanks for watching. As always, I'm fascinated to hear what you have to say. I'm interested to know what topics you'd like me to tackle in the future. Um, like and subscribe. Please comment below. Thanks. Mm -hmm.